Welcome to Understand. In this video, we'll go over architectures and how to use this powerful feature to improve your workflow. Understand lets you reorganize your code through user-defined hierarchies called architectures. These architectures essentially allow you to restructure your project directory for any purpose whatsoever. Different teams use architectures for many different activities. One group created a complexity report based on their staff to track which team is working on the most complex code bases. Another uses architectures to keep track of large refactoring projects to regularly query which files have been updated and which still need work. One of the most popular uses is organizing the code into functional units and viewing dependencies between those different units to answer questions such as, what dependencies do we have on external libraries? Let's start with this example project we've got open. You can create an architecture easily inside of the architecture browser. Just go to architectures, browse architectures to pull up the browser. Here, just press the plus button to create a new architecture and name it what you want. I'm going to create an architecture called staff. Keep in mind, if you highlight an architecture, you can add a nested architecture. Name that one Jordan. You'll notice that every project comes with a default architecture called the directory structure that contains every file in the project. Now let's add some files to our custom architecture. There are several ways to do this. The first way to add files or entire directories is just to drag and drop them from the directory structure. So let's drag the app directory into Jordan. Unexpand that. Dragging and dropping from here will keep the directory in the default architecture as well. But when dragging and dropping between custom architectures, note this action will move the files over. So instead of dragging and dropping from the default architecture again, let's just duplicate the files that we want. We can duplicate a directory by right clicking it and pressing duplicate. OK. And I'll pull that into Jordan as well and unexpand it. Or we can select the directory and press the duplicate button. So we'll select conf, duplicate button, and then we'll pull that into the architecture we want. In older versions of Understand, architectures had to be explicitly designed and built before being used. Now they can be created dynamically using a feature called tagging. There are several ways to tag a currently selected entity, or in other words, add it to a newer existing architecture. First, let's find one of the largest functions in our project to add to our high-risk functions architecture. So I'm here in the project overview, and if I double click this function here, compile branch, it'll bring it up in the information browser. From here, if I double click the name, this will pull it up in the editor. From here, I can add it to the architecture any of the following three ways. The first way is by going up to the architecture browser and pressing the tag button here, or I can go to the top level architecture menu and select add compile branch to architecture, or the third way, it's just by right-clicking the entity to pull up the context menu and selecting Add to Architecture. All three of these options will pull up this interface where we can add it to whichever architecture we want. So in this case, we want to add it to high-risk functions. Press OK. Now you can see that we have this function inside of high-risk functions. OK, let's go over architecture-based graphs. One of the many ways we can visualize and use an architecture we've made is by looking at a graph focused solely on the architecture we're interested in. You may want to do this to make sure certain files don't depend on things that they shouldn't, such as critical code depending on non-critical code. Here I've separated my source code into critical and non-critical architectures. As you can see here, I'll expand them, and I'll unexpand everything else. So let's make sure that nothing in the critical app directory depends on anything in the non-critical architecture. So to do that, we'll right click on the app directory, go to graphical views, and then select depends on. This will pull up the graph. As we can see, if we expand these nodes, all of the nodes depend on things in the source directory, which is what we want. Or let's say I just want to know where my high-risk functions are called in the project. Let's go to the architecture browser again, expand high-risk functions. Now let's select the architecture, right-click it, go to graphical views, and cluster call butterfly. 
Now we'll have a complete butterfly call graph for this architecture, showing which files to look more closely at. Now, not only can we view graphs by architecture, we can also see metrics by architecture. If we select an architecture from the browser, it will populate the information browser. Like so, we already have high-risk functions here. Here we can see a list of the basic metrics for the entities in this architecture, and only those entities, by expanding metrics here. To see even more metrics, right-click the entity in the architecture browser and select Browse Metrics. This will bring up the Metrics browser, where you can view every metric Understand has on this architecture. Let's say I want to see the total lines of code for all functions inside of my high-risk functions architecture. Go down here to Lines of Code, and we can see that it's 11,120. Be sure to check out our Metrics video for more information on the Metrics browser. Okay, now that we've gone over ways we can use our architectures, let's take a second and talk about complete coverage. Let me close the Metrics browser here. If you'd like to add an architecture, and you'd like to guarantee that you've accounted for every single file in the project, use the Hide by Architecture feature. To do this, first open the project browser. Let's undock it and have it side by side with the architecture browser so we can see everything more clearly. Here, click the hamburger menu in the top right and select Hide by and then your architecture. So in my case, I'm going to hide by staff so I can make sure every file in this project is accounted for by a staff member. So if we expand source here, we can see that the first three folders are no longer showing up in the project browser. And if we expand Jordan in the architecture browser, we can see that those folders are there. If you want to unhide anything you've hidden, simply click the X in the top right. So keep in mind, depending on what you're using it for, it may take a fair amount of time to set up your architecture. However, once it's been set up, this architecture can save you countless hours of future work, and your architecture will automatically be saved to the project so you can easily collaborate with anyone else working on it. This was a short look at architectures in Understand. For more information on architectures, or any other tool within Understand, visit support.sidetools.com.